Hi guys, Artem here, digital marketer and a growth hacker from Finland. So today I want to talk about misconceptions when it comes to BAM, e-residency. I still get questions about it in my YouTube comments and there are still people messaging me asking if they can come and live in Estonia once they apply for e-residency and all that junk. So I decided to spend some time and answer all those questions as well as go through some of the misconceptions especially when it comes to taxation work permit and so forth when it comes to e-residency remember i'm not a lawyer i'm not a work permit expert nor a taxation expert but i can give you some basic information and i can point you to the right direction obviously i'll have links pum 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 in the description below and check out my short haircut yeah <clears throat> maybe it was a big mistake to be honest but anyway enough about me <laughs> and my haircut let's go straight to the point so how can you apply for your residency well you do it on your residency page and you see here they already list that this will most likely be beneficial to basically entrepreneurs freelancers and digital nomads that is correct because you can do everything online and once you apply for e-residency you'll have to fill out a form like this it's well it's pretty simple will take you maybe half an hour or so nothing major and you will have to pay also 100 euros right and remember it, it even states here <laughs> this is not a visa permit it's not a citizenship it's not tax residency none of those basically when you apply for e-residency once you get it you will have a card like this like this see how I hid my <laughs> personal identification information with some tape yeah this is this is high-end stuff so basically you'll get a card like this and this card doesn't do anything else except authorize you to use Estonian web services governmental and non-governmental services where you can log in with this card basically think of it as a physical password that identifies you online that's it nothing else nothing else well why the heck would you want this car then well if you're a IT guru a hacker or somebody who likes to tinker with encryption and so forth well this can be used to encrypt and decrypt information similar to public and private keys and you can see here is a chip and this chip can be read in a USB reader cool stuff yeah you can tinker with it if you want but basically this is a strong form of authentication online that's it but if you don't want to use it in your programming projects and so forth why would you want this card why would you want to have e-residency well having a way to identify yourself online using strong authentication methods such as this card actually is very beneficial especially in Estonia because most of the services that Estonian government provides can be used online so if you want to um, if you want to log into tax office portal if you want to start a new company if you want to log in securely to an Estonian bank and so forth in all of those places you can use this card so before before e-residency if you wanted to open a company in Estonia you would have to travel possibly to Estonia and apply to open a company limited liability corporation in Estonia now thanks to this strong authentication you can do everything online right that's it that's basically it so once you apply for your residency once you get it you will have to probably pick it up from a 
nearby Estonian embassy. But again, it varies now thanks to pandemic and all that. It could be a bit difficult. But again, once you apply for e-residency, you will get additional information regarding pandemic and getting the card and so forth. So here again, you can see information about pandemic's impact on card pickup and so forth. Again, you can still do it. You can still apply for your residency. It's all good. So once you apply and once you get this card, you will have a USB reader that you can insert into your machine and then you can insert this card into your USB reader. You will have to download additional software. Uh, it works on Mac and Windows for sure. I'm not sure about Linux, but again, should work on Linux as well, but it works definitely the software in Windows and in Mac. So once you have software installed, you have the card, you have USB reader, now you can start using the card. So what can you do with it? Well, you can go to Estonian, there we go, Center of Registers and Information System. You can go to this portal and you can go to the company registration portal. You can click login. Uh huh. Okay. Um, for some reason, it doesn't work in my browser, but it doesn't matter. I'm sure it will work for you. I maybe have way too many extensions that are blocking some of the functionality. But again, you will be able to log in to this portal and you will be able to start a petition for company registration in Estonia, limited liability um, corporation. You can do it through a bookkeeper as well, but all in all, it will cost you under $500 for sure, including uh, governmental fees and maybe your accountant or bookkeeper's fees. And again, I would suggest doing it together with an accountant. So many accountants offer services where you just share your screen and they guide you through the process. They tell you what to do, what to press, what not to press, which could be more important. And they let you know if there is anything in Estonian, sometimes uh, even though Estonian government strives to offer all information in Estonian and English, sometimes in Russian as well, uh, due to the large population of Russian speaking um, citizens, especially in, um, well, in some parts of Estonia. So sometimes some of uh, office uh, services are offered even in three languages, Russian, English, and Estonia, even though they, they really try to offer all information in Estonian and English, sometimes some information is only in Estonia. So it will be really handy if you have a bookkeeper or an accountant, whatever, who is helping you out through the registration process. Once you registered your company, you'll have to wait for a bit, right? And you will receive information that your company has been registered. All right. Once that happened, you will have to make a deal with a bookkeeper or accountant who will handle all the formalities of running a company in Estonia. So basically, uh, if you apply for VAT number, and again, if you don't know what VAT is, I'll have some links in the description, but if you apply for a VAT number and you have Estonian clients, you will have to submit uh, VAT reports monthly um, and so forth and so forth. And remember, uh, in many cases, the process registration process changes constantly. So there are new requirements, some changes and so forth. So in some cases, and maybe even now for everybody, I don't remember since I registered my company really long ago. So in some cases you would have to have an Estonian contact person associated with your company. He doesn't have any power over your company, but you have to list a contact person who lives in Estonia. And again, this is maybe just to make sure that they can get a hold of you if you don't answer or there is some vital information that they need from you. 
and you would have to have a legal address in Estonia. So you m probably will pay something for those services, somebody who will be attached to your company as a contact person and for the legal address. You'll probably pay something for that. But again, your bookkeeper will most likely offer you those services. So um, you have a company, you have your ID card and everything that goes along with it, software and hardware reader. You registered your company, you have an agreement with the bookkeeper who also provides legal address and serves as your contact person in Estonia. Now you're ready to apply um, for a bank account, right? So due to some money laundering problems that happened in Estonia and due to the constantly tightening regulations, money laundering prevention and so forth, many banks, especially if you are outside of EU, will just outright refuse to open a bank account. In many cases, they will ask they will ask you why do you need a bank account in Estonia, especially Estonian banks. And if you don't have Estonian customers, if you don't live in Estonia, they will just say no, thank you. But there are still some and, and remember, um, European Union allows you to open a bank account anywhere in European Union for your Estonian company. And remember, if you opened a company using e-residency ID card, it's still an Estonian company. It doesn't differ in any way compared to Estonian company that was opened using traditional methods. It's an Estonian company as you know, as every other Estonian company. So as an Estonian company, you can open a bank account if they do open it for you in any country in European Union. So one that I recommend is Paysera. Uh huh. That's the wrong one. That's the right one. So Paysera is uh, basically a bank institution. It's a payment provider, maybe not a real bank institution in a way, but they allow you to open a bank account. In most cases, they will open bank account for e-residents gladly and they provide services in many languages, but most importantly in English. And basically you can apply to open a bank account. They will ask you basically some questions about where you're from. They will ask you to provide proof of identity, passport copies, information about your company, registration documents, all that jazz. List of uh, beneficiaries, of your business and so forth. So once you have your bank account now, only now you're ready to actually do something with your Estonian company. So what can you do? Oh, and remember you can start a company and you can start it together with somebody. So Estonian limited liability company doesn't have shares per se, as would a standard limited liability company would have, but they have votes or yeah. So basically more or less the same, but you can start a company with a partner, no problem. So basically once you have a bank account, you have your company registered in Estonia, now you can start using it. What can you do? Well, you can use it for your uh, freelance work. You can register on, you can register in Upwork and you can use your Estonian company so that you will get paid through Estonian company and the money will be sent to your Estonian uh, company's bank account that could reside in Lithuania, for example, in Pacer's case. You can invoice your European customers and so forth. Really, really nice stuff. But, but remember, remember, you will have to obey the law and I never, never would recommend trying any kind of shady stuff. So if you want to use Estonian company in order to 
reduce taxation burden in many cases you will not able to do that because Estonian government has agreements with many many countries in the world in order to optimize prevent double taxation and so forth they have ta tax agreements with other countries so in many cases if you reside in Sweden for example and you open an Estonian company and you use that Estonian company to bill your Swedish customers in order to reduce uh, taxation because in uh, uh, in Sweden for example corporate tax is pretty high and in Estonia on the other hand there is no corporate tax so you still pay tax in Estonia but you only pay tax when you withdraw money from the company so if you pay yourself dividends you pay dividend tax if you withdraw salary you will pay income tax and so forth right in Estonia but there is no corporate tax for limited liability companies but in Sweden there is corporate tax so some people think like hey let's open an Estonian company let's continue billing our customers in Sweden using our Estonian company but we will be able to save a lot of money because we will not be paying corporate tax well that most likely will not work since agreement between Estonia and Sweden states that if company is run completely from Sweden and money that comes uh, to Estonian company originated from Sweden that Estonian company will most likely be liable for taxation in Sweden so remember you cannot use Estonian company to circumvent taxation or reduce taxation in most cases if you are willing to move to Estonia and stay there permanently yes you can do that but again talk to a taxation professional before doing anything because in most cases there is no tax benefit of running a company in Estonia right okay good I just wanted to make that uh, to make that clear so uh, let's go into misconceptions so once you have this e-residency card can you move to Estonia no you cannot this is a password to identify you online that's all but you can use e-residency to start a business in Estonia and then you can apply for work permit in Estonia and if your company actually has legitimate business in Estonia that requires your presence in Estonia and you're able to show all of it in you know proper documentation you will be able to apply for a work permit but again they will scrutinize you so if you say like hey I'm opening a freelance company and I want to get a work permit and I want to move to Estonia in most cases they will say like well you can do that online your presence in Estonia is not needed but then again if you're opening a company in Estonia and uh, you're for example investing like 100,000 euros and opening a restaurant in Tallinn and you want to be the main cook in that restaurant for example uh, that could be a really strong case for you to get a work permit again in most cases if you do work online and online only opening a company getting e-residency will not get you a work permit or a visa or a residency permit in Estonia okay just wanted to make that clear uh, what else if you think about some other misconceptions uh, well we talked about big ones taxation and work and residency permit uh, let's talk about some others so once you have your Estonian company how can you actually use it if you're a digital nomad and this is where it becomes interesting so you can actually move to Estonia like for real right like for real you can apply especially if you're if you already have EU citizenship you can just move to Estonia you don't have to apply for visa nothing you can just directly move to Estonia 
and you can rent an apartment there and stay for a certain period of time so that you're only liable for tax in Estonia. Again, talk to your tax consultant before doing anything. So you can move to Estonia, you can stay there permanently for a certain period of time. So if, for example, you live in Sweden, you could move to Estonia, find an apartment there and stay there for like two years. And then you will not be liable anymore to pay taxes in Sweden. You will only be liable, you know, in Estonia, you will only be paying taxes in Estonia. And then once that happens, you can start traveling the world. You can be a digital nomad, right? And you can use your Estonian company to build your customers. You can use your Estonian company to receive money from Upwork and other platforms. If you have some digital business, e-commerce, whatever, can, everything could be coming to your Estonian company. And then you withdraw money from that Estonian company and pay income tax, Estonian income tax, which is like 20 something percent. And that way you can reduce taxation burden a little bit if you are otherwise living in a highly taxed uh, country such as Finland, Sweden, Norway, and so forth. This way you can actually, yeah, this way you can reduce tax a little bit and you can still travel the, all around the world and do everything online using this ID card. Submit documents, sign agreements, and so forth. So in most cases, who benefits from actually getting e-residency ID card. People who want to open business in Estonia and people who just want to tinker with the card, who are just interested in smart cards, uh, encryption and so forth. That's pretty much it. That is it. And remember, there are so many people who are applying for e-residency permit and opening businesses in Estonia for all the wrong reasons. So it will be very hard for you to get a VAT number, right? You will have to show that you actually are planning to sell services in Estonia. In most cases, many, many companies will be outright rejected when they apply for VAT number. Um, when you open a company, obviously, many times people open Estonian company for all the wrong reasons. So they can, um, I don't know, they can circumvent taxation. As I mentioned before, that doesn't work. And um, yeah, I think uh, one legitimate reason also to start a company in Estonia is if you want to start a holding company. So I think that's a very interesting use case for e-residency card and for, you know, for Estonian business. So you can open a holding company in Estonia and you can basically direct your money to that company. You can basically bring that money to Estonia, to that Estonian company, and then you can use that Estonian company to buy stocks, buy real estate and so forth, and use that, use that as a holding company for your money, basically. That's a one very interesting use case. But again, when you bring money from outside of EU, many banks will just outright refuse to bring that money in because they cannot be sure of that money's origins. So that could be hard. And in most cases, they will make you prove what is the origin of that money and everything will be really, really hard. But again, if you're a European citizen, that should be no problem. Again, no matter what it is before doing anything, you can apply for e-residency just for fun and you will get the ID card and you're not liable for anything. You can just play with it, use it, have fun with it. Remember, it's just a password to identify you online. But if you start business in Estonia, I really recommend talking to a tax professional in your country and talk about liabilities that that makes. 
you know creates for you because Estonian government digitally submits documents to other countries in European Union and maybe to some other countries outside of EU so if you live in Sweden Sweden will know right away that you open a company in Estonia and so forth so no shady business guys talk to a taxation professional before opening a company in Estonia I guess that's it if you have any more questions please write them in the comments if you like this content like and subscribe and hey if you want to learn more about e-residency let me know in the comments below thank you and have a great day